Um, thank you for uh, inviting me to participate. I don't have such nice uh, pictures and videos of exciting trips that you guys have done, but <laughs> <laughs> part, <laughs> yeah. but I, part of what um, I wanted to share with you today is more some thoughts that I have in terms of collaboration, um, more than specifically talking about my own projects. I, I work in, my, my field of interest is HIV, and I do community HIV research, uh, trying to um, identify uh, Ad you know, Atlanta is one of those places that has a lot, has an epidemic of HIV infection in youth. Um, so part of what I do is try to identify them earlier and s use um, ways to, to, to get them into care as well as to maintain them into care because there's a big gap among those who are um, diagnosed or who have HIV and those who are in optimal care of HIV. So um, there's a lot of research in, in ways of how to improve that, what we call um, the HIV continuum of care cascade. But today what I wanted to sort of share with you guys was some, some thoughts about collaboration um, and, and, and kind of touch on some of the um, aspects that my, my, panel, my fellow panelists have discussed already. So I think one of the questions is, you know, why to collaborate, right? And, and I think that and you know, a successful science career uh, requires suitable partners to, to whom collaborate, right? I don't think anyone that does science has not, can do it on their own, right? So uh, you need to find people to be able to collaborate, and there's different reasons why this is important, not just because it will enhance your research, it will teach you a lot of things, you will learn uh, more things, but also because funding sources are coming that way, right? So if you realize um, there's been a significant push from not only NIH or you know, uh, private funding sources, um, uh, foundations, to um, do interdisciplinary research, right? And you cannot know it all, right? So uh, there's, 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 a, there's, there's a reason for that. And this is just a sort of a um, snapshot of, you know, and when you go to NIH, you can search for different RFAs, and this is just a snapshot of what I'm talking about. And um, you know, there's pages of, of this in which they are, even in the title, telling you you need to collaborate, right? So I, I think in order to, to, to be able to be fundable, you need to start thinking about research collaboration. And there's always, there's, you know, when to start to collaborate is when you start doing research. So it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, you, I think you need to start thinking about this. Um, you know, the other thing is ability to share resources. So with the current funding environment in which is tighter and tighter every time, um, I think um, we need to find ways to share resources between different PIs, right? And, and collaboration is a way to do that, right? Um, as you saw from my previous uh, panelists, they, you know, they, they collaborate with people in different fields that have expertise and resources to do things that they're interested in, right? So this is a way to share resources, and, and I think that's, um, that's something that you need to take into account. Obviously, the opportunity to learn from other disciplines, um, it will just enhance, you know, it, it will enhance your, the way, when, when you have a research question, there's multiple ways to look at that research question. There's not only one way to look at it. And, uh, and just by uh, collaborating with other disciplines, you will have a complete or, or a better picture of what uh, things entitle in, your, in, in, in what you're asking yourself. And, and I think it will just enhance overall your experience as a researcher and, and it will allow you to learn different things. Um, in terms of you know, technology has facilitated all this. Now, nowadays, as we were looking at, we can collaborate with people inside the university, but we can go all the way across the United States and all the way across the world very easily, right? So it doesn't mean that, that all of your collaborations is easy to communicate with your collaborators, but the tools are there for you to be able to embark into um, multinational collaborations. And this is important not only for you as a PI, but it's also important for your institution to be able to communicate with institutions abroad and make sure that all the agreements and all the other things are, 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 are well taken care of. 
So then the next question, I think, is how to collaborate, right? And that's a more difficult question. Um, and uh, I think the first step is always the hardest. Um, and uh, or, or one of the things I try to tell the people I work with is it's not enough to just sort of bring to the table or just, you know, approach someone, you know, that works in your field and say, oh, I love what you do in research. I think you need to bring to the table what you do in research and how you can contribute to his research, right? So it's, it's a different conversation. It's not like, you know, and, and, and it's not like I'm going to, you know, I want to do what you're doing because you're in my field. No, I, I have this other aspect and, or I'm doing this other aspect that will enhance um, what you're doing and how, why don't we talk about how we can come up with this together. So I think, I, I think that's, 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 that's important to bring to the table. And second, you know, there's different venues to do this. You know, scientific meetings are good for this. There's a lot of discussions about, uh, um, and, you know, or, or opportunities to talk and discuss in scientific meetings. There's social networks now that you can also join and, and, and find people who are working in the areas that you are interested in. Um, and then, you know, and some of the uh, panelists also talked about this, but I think this is really important. So a productive and well-established form of relationship between individuals is, imp is important in initiating successful research collaboration. So what this means is, you know, at the beginning you need to have the hard conversations. You know, you need to understand what your responsibilities are in, in, in the collaboration what your duties are, and you need to have timelines for those, right? This is not, you know, you need to be able to establish a schedule, divide responsibilities, um, you know, and have the hard conversations of authorship, of, you know, what are my expectations? So it's already laid down in the table early enough that it's not, you know, when you're writing the paper that that's not the time to do it, right? So, so if, if you bring those hard conversations from the beginning, uh, it, it will not only make, I think, your collaboration a lot easier, it will sort of bring the stress level down because you know what you're supposed to be doing in that collaboration, and it will make the collaboration overall more successful. Um, it also gives you some sort of um, guide or what your expectations are and how you can make those deliverables, right? It's very, it's very difficult to go into a, a collaboration where you don't know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, right? And when you are supposed to be doing. So I think those just put everybody in the same page and this is what we're gonna do and this is how we're gonna do it and this is how we're gonna be, be having the final product. Um, and you know, chemistry matters. This is sort of like a relationship, right? So it's not like you can not be friends of everybody. <laughs> right? And that's just human nature. Um, so you need to understand that, um, you know, the styles of working may be different and you don't, you're not compatible. So if that happens, you, you may not necessarily be able to collaborate, even though you admire their work or you like their work or you, you want to work with them. Sometimes it doesn't click, right? Um, or, or you just, you know, you may not like the person overall, like you think it's in a, a they do great research, but they don't necessarily work the same way and, and, and therefore you cannot work with them. Reliability is a great asset for a collaboration. So your reputation is on the line when you do collaborations, right? So make sure you are able to deliver what you are, where they're asking you to do, right? That's why it's so important, those initial conversations. Make sure you have the resources to do what you're telling. Make sure if you're doing clinical research like us sometimes in, in, in medicine, uh, make sure you have the patient population you're able to enroll and then you can enroll them. and and that if you say you're gonna enroll 50 patients in one year, that's what you're gonna be doing, right? So, because your reputation is on the line, your institution reputation is on the line, um, and, 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 and therefore it's really, really important, and, and, and it will be just useful for either continuing that collaboration or maybe finding other collaborations where you can um, grow. Uh, know that you need to compromise sometimes, right? Um, you know, you're not working alone anymore. So this is a collaboration. So sometimes the one thing you will never compromise is in the ethics of, of your research, right? And how you're doing your research. But otherwise there may be times where you have to give the other person um, the win because uh, it's important for the collaboration. 
you're going to be sharing rewards, but also sharing problems and issues. So don't run away when there are problems, right? You need to address them, right? You need to be, you're as responsible as your collaborator. Um, so if things are not going well, you need to either help them fix, fix them yourself, uh, you know, put all your resources to get them to where they need to be. And then don't lose sight of the big picture. The big picture is your research career, right? So collaborations will help you advance your research career, will help you write more papers, will help you do different, learn more things, but overall your own research needs to also be there, right? So you need to be conducting your own research, writing your own papers, so that people will want to collaborate with you, right? So don't, don't lose that big picture in the sense that you have your own research career and that's why people are wanting to collaborate with you. So, um, so those are my thoughts. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.